Hey, how's it going everyone? Tayson here. Firstly, a happy new year, happy 2019 to all of you. I hope you've all had an awesome Christmas time and new year. And depending on where you are, hopefully you've had an awesome winter holidays or are having awesome summer holidays at the moment. It's currently summertime where I am. It is boiling at the moment, but I've had an awesome one month long vacation, doing a lot of cool things with my family, a lot of other explorations, but it's good to finally be back. So I thought, why not kick off with 2019 and go through all the games I beat in 2018. 18, specifically all the JRPGs I beat too. They're usually most of the games that I play, but I did play a lot of other really cool things. And I said to myself last year, I want to at least beat one game per month, or I should say at least 12 games per year. And I successfully did that. I beat 12 games last year. And it actually works out to more than one game a month because last year I had two surgeries. I had one surgery on my elbow and one surgery on my hip. So it was about four months in last year where I couldn't actually play any games, but I still managed to get the 12 done. So we'll see how we go this year. But kick things off firstly, the first game I beat at the beginning of last year was Near Automata. Now this game literally is something that I expected to be incredibly good but it was even better than that now i am coming from the original near i originally played near gestalt and i played about 65 hours of that some time ago so coming to near automata for me was an experience to sort of see where the story has gone how it all links up you know how i guess how big the connections are maybe how little but the game really explored a lot of aspects of themes and context that I don't see as often explored in other forms of games, especially as a medium of storytelling. So it was really brilliant to see how these could be incorporated to a game and the elements that are unique to a game could tell this story, which you wouldn't be able to get exactly the same in other mediums, such as movies or novels, etc. I highly recommend this. I would, I would definitely say play the first one first, but in saying that, it's not cheap. It is not easy to find and it is obviously somewhat aged. For me, I played it quite easily, but at the same time, you can play this game by itself and you will still have an incredible experience. So that was the first game I beat. The second game I beat last year was Dragon Guard 3. So connecting it to Nier Automata, this you could call is the origin story or the very first prequel in a sense. It takes place before Dragon Guard 1. Dragon Guard 2 sort of exists in its own thing and then we've got Nier after Dragon Guard 1 and then Nier Automata after Nier. And this game was something that despite having frame rate issues, some other, I guess you could say, budget issues with the game. I found the story to be very incredible. It was something that was quite emotional for me. And it was great to play this as a backdrop to the Dragon Guard games and also see them improve upon previous mechanics and stuff in the original Dragon Guard games. So for me, I saw a lot of positives in this from the gameplay perspective that others didn't see, but that's because I originally played Dragon Guard 1 even before playing Nier. So to see all sort of the elements in it was really great, but again, the story was something that stood out for me. In my region, it never got a physical release, so this is the US version and I had to play it digitally just so I have access to the DLC in my region. But overall, highly recommend it. Now the third game I beat, I don't actually own a copy of it yet, but it did get a physical release recently, and that is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Now this was another game that really took me by surprise. It is one that only takes about, oh I'm gonna say five to 10 hours to beat, but it was quite a personal story, and it was something that was relatable to all of us. It was about a character and her own emotional and, and personal struggles through her life, both emotional and physical, a lot of other things, you know, fighting her own demons. And it actually gave me, at least, a sense of perception, possibly, as to what it's like to have psychosis. I very much love the aspect that uh, wearing he headphones is recommended, and basically, yeah, different sounds coming out of different earpieces, depending on um, the setting you were in, sort of the location. And although this is something that is common across many games, usually at these times there were no other sounds, so it was always a single thing you were hearing. For example, she had voices whispering in her head, and they were sort of all representing different aspects of human emotions and you were hearing those different ones in the different earpieces so it was very interesting and a game that I'm really glad got a physical release I'm really glad it shows that video games can be more than something that is that many people who don't play games see as just something that you know is, is just a form of entertainment and fun there are no stories to games but in fact you know games can be really used to tell a lot more than just 
you know, a fun experience and something that's quite serious and leaves you with a new perspective or appreciation of different things. So I thought that was great that the game did that. Now moving on to the next games that I beat. So there are two here. The first being Eco. I loved Eco. So I originally played a bit of Eco a long time ago, but it was awesome to pick it back up, go through the entire game. It's about a five hour game. And I really like the stories. I've beaten all of Fumito Ueda's games and it's really hard to rank them because by ranking one as the best and another one as the worst, even the worst ones will be incredible. So I'm really excited to see that Fumito Ueda is, looks like he's working on a brand new game with his studio Gen Design, but to play Eco, the very first one in the series, which is more of a platformer puzzle type of game, very much puzzle aspect. It was really cool and had some bit of challenges into it, trying to work out, you know, sort of how to open certain things and get to certain parts. So again, I was really happy to play this game. And then moving on to the next game I played and that was Shadow of the Colossus. So it was good to go and play the PS4 version. I had previously played a bit of the PS3 version and boy is this different. What I loved about this game, simply just going through the entire world and landscape and just being amazed by the environments, the ecosystems, the animals that you come across, and also just the, the sense of quietness and, and the, I guess the, the colossal nature of these colossi, pardon the pun, it was just brilliant. The fact that there are no other enemies other than these colossi, 16 from my memory, and oh gosh, I loved it. And I especially love the final colossus. That was just an insane battle and a very fantastic ending. Really enjoyed the story of this, and this is something I find across all of Fumito Ueda's games. They're about five to ten hours or so, but the stories are very rich, and there's a lot you could sort of play off with your imagination as the world and stuff like that. But I think that's great because we see some of these sort of similarities or connections between all the games so as to whether they are all in the same world. I know Shadow of the Colossus and Eco are in the same world because I've got the Last Guardian walkthrough slash art book and it discusses that. Uh, I believe they're on different continents though. But yeah, I highly recommend playing this on the PS4 and it'll be really interesting to see how this game is on the PS4 Pro because I've heard it just looks even more beautiful. Now moving on to the next game, one that I should have played long ago but I only just got onto last year and that is The Last of Us Remastered. What can I say? Again, another rich form of storytelling. This is a great story and it's not something that I could say is unique story-wise but the way it is told as a game is fantastic. It was really great. Again, it was another personal game. It was one that almost as if you were playing through a movie in a sense, but at the same time, there was a lot of gameplay to it. So it was really great to sort of have that combination. It didn't feel something like a visual novel or like a telltale game. But at the same time, it definitely took you on a story journey from start to finish. And moving on to the next series of games I beat, and this was obviously one of my favorite games to re-beat last year because these are games I beat over 12 years ago, and that is the Dot Hack Original Quadrilogy. So this is just in a collector's box that I have them in, but just to show you the games. Firstly, we've naturally got Dot Hack Part 1 Infection. We've got Dot Hack Part 2 Mutation. Dot Hack Part 3 Outbreak and Dot Hack Part 4 Quarantine. This was awesome to go through again. So I logged in over 100 hours in all the games. I did about 25 hours per game, completing them all, basically 100%ing them, except for the very end of Volume 4, because right now I'm at a bit where I don't need to transfer my save data across, meaning that I can always go back and complete some of the little tiny extra bits that I haven't already done. Whereas with the other games, once you transfer your data over, then it's almost as if you can't really just easily go back and then obviously bring it back to the next games because you have to rebeat those games. But I really love them, really love them so much. The Dot Hack games are so close to my heart. It's one of my favorite series ever. So to be able to go back to the originals, which I beat when I was about, uh, about 14 years old when they came out here in Australia, it was magical and it was interesting. These are obviously very old. They play very poorly compared to games nowadays, but I loved it. It was absolutely no problem for me and it was so nostalgic hearing all these different like animation sounds and the music, everything. It was like all these memories coming back to me because I remembered them. They were just all, all hidden away there. So I loved beating that. So again, I would highly recommend if you happen to have all of them to play them all. If you have most of them, but for example, you can't find the infamously expensive volume four. 
I recommend them beating the others or those that you have and then watching the rest thing, either cutscenes or let's plays on YouTube because I think you can get a lot out of that and it saves you obviously spending the money. Now next, a game that was also part of my childhood was the Spyro the Dragon game. This is my original game of the first one, but I was very fortunate enough to get a copy of Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I was glad to buy this on a special just when it came out. And so far, I've just been the first one. The first one was almost my favorite game. It was the first game I got. I got the others I found later, second hand and stuff. I remember finding the second game for only $4 Australian, which is about $3, $2.70-something US or so. So to get the PlayStation 1 version for that cheap was awesome. It was great to play this. I really love what they've done with it. I find it very faithful to the original, but just so much more playable. Just fantastic. The only thing that really bugs me about this is the fact that parts of the second and third game uh, require download, so it's not all on the disc, which is very disappointing because it makes me feel like, well, what's going to be the worth of me being able to play this, you know, when the servers are shut down in the future? I'll only be able to play the first one in its entirety. So you never know, hopefully we do maybe get like a, um, maybe we get like an anniversary version or something and that will have all of it on the disc. But at the same time, really glad that they remastered this game and I really can't wait for the Medieval series. Now lastly, moving on to a game that I played some time ago but I never beat in its entirety and I'm glad to have finally beaten it now and that is Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. So I've got a physical version, this is the age and physical version but I own it digitally because this version is a little different. One, it's, it's got English in it as an option but a lot of stuff is still in Japanese and things like that and the music is some different music and stuff like that to cater to the Japanese version and I like all the music and stuff of the English version but as a matter of fact I actually bought it digitally before I even found this copy so I just thought look I'll stick to the digital copy that I've got played all then I've got access to some of the downloadables if I ever want to download them but it's really great to play this get myself prepped for Devil May Cry 5 I absolutely cannot wait for that game that and Kingdom Hearts 3 are just two of my most anticipated games of this year and Kingdom Hearts 3 being obviously my most anticipated game of all time I really can't wait for that and we've only got less than a week I really can't believe we're saying that just fantastic and I was really Really fortunate I was able to get a pre-order for the PlayStation 4 Pro Kingdom Hearts 3 so I was just so excited for that I feel for anyone who didn't manage to get it uh, and at the same time it isn't cheap so I guess there is the loss of not being able to get it but at the same time you know it is an expensive thing I'm going to be selling my original PlayStation just so I can sort of help afford what I've spent for that but yeah just really can't wait to play that game and I might be able to revisit some of these games I've mentioned on the PlayStation 4 Pro for example Shadow of the Colossus so yeah anyways I'll leave it at that let me know some of these games have you played them let me know some of the games you beat in 2018 or even like how many you beat Again, it's really awesome to finally be back from vacation. There was so much that's happened in the past month that I've all wanted to talk about. Things like uh, Ease 9 being announced, uh, the recent localization thing with the Trails of Cold Steel 3, Episode Arden trailer, the recent Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. Hope you'll enjoy, and until the next video, stay spot on.